Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Welcome back. This is the Cube. We are live at Big Data SV in San Jose. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon, and I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick. We've got another great guest. Uh, the great guests just keep on coming here at Big Data <laughs> SV. Uh, a frequent guest as well, Manny yeah. Charbra, CEO of Cloudwork, friend of the Cube. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Absolutely, great to have you. And um, obviously, we're here. It's Big Data Week. We've got Strata Hadoop World going on. You've probably been over the show. What are your impressions this week? What's what's the vibe like? Oh, the I think I think this 2015 seems to be where the build up is complete. You know, I think the industry has matured. You can ingest every kind of data which you have. You know, you can basically have real-time feeds, you basically have streaming, you have uh, enterprise data. So every aspect of data can be ingested, transformed, and visualization. I think that one of the big thing is Spark. I mean, mm -hmm. the, this is the first time we are seeing that in the big data analytics market that you can visualize something. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, the, it is the data scientist market now. You know, the IT basically job has been done for the last five years is complete. You know, starting in 2010, you know, all the stack has been built, and now you can, big data is available for the data scientists, I would say. That's here. interesting you mentioned that. We heard something very similar from, uh, we had a the chief data scientist from Simply Hired on yesterday. He yeah. said something very similar. It's uh, hearing a lot more about data science. He was at the data science day on the Wednesday, uh, and he said something similar. It's kind of the, the infrastructure is kind of hardening, uh, yeah. and now it's about what are we going to do with all that data, some of the analytics and data science. Yeah, I mean, for the last five, four years of, uh, we basically have in this journey, uh, it is all building. We never basically were able to look at the data in Hive in the big uh, kind of scenario, but what Spark does, it, it allows you to basically feel the data now. And that, I think, is the next, the, what is the sort of the end of the journey as for the infrastructure buildup for the big data stack is. You know, mm -hmm. that's how I think the feeling is this year. So y you had a few announcements this week. Tell us about that. You've got um, some new announcements around Hortonworks, around Cloudera, and data stacks. Yeah, so we basically launched the managed services uh, for all these three platforms, uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks on the Hadoop side, and uh, Cassandra for Cassandra for data stack side. Uh, we feel that the market is kind of mature, that uh, the companies which have the infrastructure for the last three to four years have kind of come to the point where it's becoming pretty stable, and they are need to have basically outsources to the professionals. So that's what we're launching. Mm -hmm. uh, strata. Uh, we are also going to launch uh, in coming months a sort of a startup package, big startup package, big data startup package, whether you want to use Cassandra Spark or you want to do Hadoop Spark or you want to do Hadoop Cassandra Spark. In all the ingestions, aspects, everything we can manage for you, both mm -hmm. on the starting from the platform side to data development side to the analytics side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, walk us through that a little bit. What is a typical journey uh, for an enterprise getting started with big data in terms of um, you know, the first steps you have to take, whether it's planning, planning, finding use cases, wh wh what does that journey look like? Uh, what typically, what has, is happening now in the industry is that you have this four weeks initial package which basically goes into install a platform in just a couple of data, show them the value. Mm -hmm. Once they get psyched on that, then you basically start building the data pipelines. So you, in addition, you can basically take it through scoop from the existing enterprise data, uh, you can now start taking the social data to this, uh, you know, Flume, other worlds, and then you basically have the streaming data with Spark Streaming, Storm Kafka, ingestion mechanism. Once it comes to that, now the data are available on the platform where you can join these things, you can, you know, analyze, you can transform that, and then basically take it to the visualization level. So all the stack is kind of built right now. Mm -hmm. And 30 days for the first, I would say, in a, just the initial, aspect, and then I think six to nine months for the development of the data pipelines, and I think another three months where the, it's done to the point where the data scientists can start playing. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. That's a year-long journey. Mm -hmm. and, and what are there some patterns emerging as to where people like to start um, in terms of the applications, the business cases, yeah, right. the, the types of, of divisions within the company? Who, who either has the budget, the mojo, or is willing to take the risk to kind of get it started? I, I think it, it is always the line of business which is pushing the IT to do it. You know, the IT basically never came up uh, and said that, okay, we're going to do it. This is always a line of business. But this year we have seen, you know, the things coming out of the Hortonworks and the cloud areas of the world, there are specific vertical use cases being developed. So now the, the discussion is reaching to the line of business, the board level guys, rather than the IT guys. 
And that speaks to the maturation of the industry right, right. now. But even in line of business, can you give some examples, not necessarily of companies, you probably can't talk about companies, but of kind of the specific projects that's the thing that actually gets the company to the tipping point that says, okay, we got to get involved in this. This is how we're going to start and, and really have that proof case for the rest of the company of why we need to be involved in big data analytics. I mean, if you look at the retail, 360 degree customer view. I think that gets excited everybody. Every every retail customer in the world basically wants to have, you know, where you, their customers are going. Whether they're shopping online, whether they're shopping on uh, off sites in the stores, you know, they want to have one view of that. And that's a very across the use case you've seen. Whether you go to retail, you go to telecom, you go to any other industry, you see that. So those kind of use cases are, I think, elevated to the level now. And I th we will see in 2015 from the major guys like Cloudera, Hortonworks, a lot of the vertical use cases. I think the discussion from the where they were selling to the IT is gone. Now it is to the line of business <coughs> with certain specific <coughs> guidelines how to build these use cases using the tool sets. Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit about what's going on in the industry this week. Obviously we've been, had some big announcements from the um, technology supplier side with the, uh, the establishment of the ODP, the Open Data Platform. I'm curious to get your opinion. I mean, you've you're, you're been in this market now for, for a while. You're kind of well informed. You know you've got a lot of relationship with the different players. Um, what is your opinion of the uh, Open Data Platform? Does the industry need such a consortium? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that the tool sets is there. I think more, it's a more for marketing looks like, more for marketing aspect. Uh, I think uh, the tool sets which are emerging from Hortonworks, Cloudera, uh, Spark, on, and the NoSQL side, I think basically does this thing. Now the question comes is, you approach the line of business, you know, to solve their business problem. Mm -hmm. So I think the, you don't need any other consortium. It also confuses the market. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult to navigate now in the big data journey. I mean, there's so many components to it. So you put another one in the mix, mm -hmm. it'll <laughs> confuse the message. Uh, good point. I mean, so one of the, we, we were just talking to Sunny Manjar from Pivotal, and one yeah. of the things he mentioned was we're seeing these mini ecosystems emerge around the different distribution providers where some of the applications and the, and the tooling that might work with one does not work with the other, and that's one of the things they're trying to address. Do you find that? Or um, he's right in that aspect. That there are certain things. Let's, let's take an example. If you basically are using, uh, let's say, a high frequency data, coming out the Internet of Things or something. Then you need sort of a high persistence engine, which is like NoSQL can do that, and you can analyze that to Spark. So you don't need Hadoop on that one. Hadoop sort of become the repository at the end of the day, you mm -hmm. know, for that one. And you might never need that data, you just need the signals, exceptional signals which are coming from the Internet of Things, you know. So yes, ecosystem on that one basically is different. So it depends on the use case to use case. But does it mean that, okay, we basically need to have a combination of all those things and confuse the market? I, I think it, it might not work. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's what my thought is. Um, so tell us a little bit about, uh, you mentioned uh, Datastax and Cassandra, one of the, one of the um, uh, databases you're working with now with yeah. your new offering. Um, you know, we're trying to parse through the kind of the NoSQL market. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting things happening there. We saw MongoDB raise a bunch of money last yeah. last month, but it, you know it was a Series G raise, yes. um, which raises some questions. Um, you know we're hearing Datastax and Cassandra is gaining momentum, uh, but you know, trying trying to build a business for those companies in a, in a NoSQL space is proving a little bit challenging. But I'm curious from your perspective, uh, why did you just for this announcement in particular choose to go with Datastax and Cassandra? Are you seeing particular momentum with uh, Cassandra in the, in the enterprise? Uh, how about your take on at that? At the market? level of the Fortune 500, we see Cassandra has more momentum where the use cases are a little bit more complex mm -hmm. and the scale is a little bit higher. When you say complex, I mean, mean the complex is the time series data, you know, you're trying to analyze and there's some real aspect to it, the business mm -hmm. aspect to it. I think from the Mongo perspective is that it's a departmental database, it's mm -hmm. very easy to use and they are doing their own managed services kind of components. Mm -hmm. I think we basically feel and what we've seen from the market from our customers is that Cassandra is becoming a real replacement for Oracle uh, Exadatas of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have seen, we have implemented, we are current implementation of two at those places in the Fortune 500 where all Exadata is replaced by Cassandra. Mm. So there's a real momentum for those guys. Mm -hmm. Is, I mean, so there's, there's obviously, talking about fragmentation, there's a lot of different NoSQL databases yeah. out there. Do you see one or another of those databases starting to emerge as more of a general purpose NoSQL database that's going to be able to do things, you know, w w that, that Previously, you needed multiple different databases to do. Is Cassandra that database? Is there something else emerging? Or are we going to see this? I, I, I think different databases I th I for I different, different databases for different use cases. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think you basically have a lot of HBase in the Hadoop camp. Mm -hmm. you know, but if you'd like to have a high frequency data independent of Hadoop, you know, Cassandra does it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Couchbase made an announcement with Hortonworks uh, mm -hmm. residing on the uh, YAM. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good one. So I think, but it'll be a different use case, a different 
uh, data, NoSQL database, and also what infrastructure does the company have? They have mm -hmm. already, you know, Hadoop running, they would go for the HBase. Mm -hmm. You right. know, if you don't have Hadoop to that extent and you want a lightweight, and then you go to Cassandra. But we've seen some uh, real uh, significant large Cassandra clusters. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's an interesting sign that we're starting to see these workloads start to really scale. Scale. And yeah. it's, as you mentioned, the infrastructure is kind of hardening, and now we're moving to that more of that data science phase. Yeah. But does that open up, or does that create new challenges for the enterprise where maybe the, they were previously focused more on the infrastructure? Okay, now that's starting to get solved, uh, but now the data science, that's, that's certainly no easy, easy problem. <laughs> Again, data science is a domain specific. I yeah. think I think you require, I mean, there are enough intelligent people, I think, that in those domains which will take on. The advantage is now that they have a platform to work on. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so we've seen uh, what the Databricks guys are doing at Spark on their own platform which they're building on AWS, mm -hmm. a very powerful platform where you can really go and query the data in SQL, R, Python, you can build these notebooks, and these notebooks are basically, you can pre-build them and you can put them together to perform solutions. Very, very easy to see and feel the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so you talked about the infrastructure's done, the, you're the data scientist, which is great, but it's the line of businesses that are now driving the purchase decision. When do we, when do we move beyond the data scientists and really start to push more of this down into the line of business people being able to see the data, analyze the data, and take action on the data? We had, we had Bill Schmarzo on from EMC and he was talking about you know, kind of hospital admittance cases where you can use the factors to determine whether somebody's got a higher risk of a problem or not and potentially change the track that you get them on. What's it going to take to get to that kind of next level of execution uh, to I, use this data in these tools? I, I think you'll see that in 2015. Uh, we basically have uh, a great partnership both with Cloudera and Hortonworks, and we see them, the focus on vertical industry, the vertical use cases. I mean, you can now see that, okay, what kind of data you're going to ingest, what transformation you had to do for the each, each vertical use case, and what visualization are required. So that all those discussions and all those templates are kind of being done right now as we speak. You know, so I think in 2015 you'll see a line of business kind of kind of feeling that you know, okay, they have a big data solution available for them, mm -hmm. not for the IT, but for them. Right. Okay. Do you, how do you feel in terms of the business side of the house uh, among your customers, understanding the, the potential of big data, understanding some of the nuances uh, of how to apply it? Because as we move from the infrastructure to the data science, you got to get more. The business has to get more involved, right? Because there, as true. you said, you talked earlier about that's where the conversation should start, actually. Yeah. Um, what is the level of education, generally speaking, do you think out in the mainstream enterprise about uh, the power of big data and analytics and the potential? I think the Fortune 1000 gets it. Mm -hmm. You know, the enterprise gets it because it also, in not using big data, poses an existen existential threat to their business. The core to their business, because you see a lot of the upstarts happening in the Silicon Valley using data as the core. You know, and when you're competing with those companies where they capture each and every data at every instance, it becomes very difficult if you don't have that insights. So I think uh, they get it. I think it, that means it's been five years, so mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty much, I think I'm pretty sure that they get it mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know? Very good. And uh, the challenge is beyond Fortune, I think 1,000. Yeah, well, well, that's a good question. I mean, as it certainly falls in line with our research and what we're finding. We're seeing, um, you know, specifically, if you're talking about Hadoop and some of the big data solutions, you're seeing Fortune 1,000, Global 1,000, there. They're all in, they get yeah. it, I think I think I agree with you on yeah. that point. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you're seeing obviously these kind of uh, born data-driven startups. Yeah. Um, Uber is the poster child of that, but yeah. you know, there's others. It's, it's kind of in their DNA uh, yes. around big yeah. data. Th and so those two ends of the spectrum get it, but there's this huge middle of the market, um, you know, still very large enterprises, not, but not maybe Fortune 1000, you know, down to mid-sized companies and certainly small, small uh, enterprises that still, I think, are very either confused about it or Maybe even not even thinking about it yet. What's it going to take to break through that? Is this just a natural evolution of a market? It's I think take it's a natural time. evolution of the market. And the other thing also, I think the cloud is going to become emerge as a big mm. data destination. And so we we have seen a huge workloads migrating to AWS mm. this year, last year. You know, we've seen that. I mean, something in the. So you're talking about Hadoop workloads and, uh, and Hadoop workloads, Cassandra workloads, yep. and the new dot, like thousands of um, instances running. Mm -hmm. You know, so huge workloads are going there to the cloud. I think the enterprise is getting really, really comfortable with the cloud in spite of all the security and aspect, and they feel that, okay, they, the cloud is a better protector of the data than they, their IT is. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Because this challenge for keeping the security within the IT is very, very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting, yeah, because, because of course that was the knock on cloud for a while. It's, oh, well, it's the security. You can't be, you can't, be, you trust your data outside of your own, your own uh, four walls. But when you actually take a step back, 
AWS has got better security than the vast majority of enterprise yeah, data centers. Yeah, because they have the people, they can do yeah. that. Well, well you, you don't have the disgruntled yeah. employee that yeah. works there that, that right. goes home with and gets a laptop And I think, stolen, and I think right? what we've, we've heard is that some <laughs> of the challenges around, the t not necessarily that the level of security, but does, the, does their security framework fit with how your enterprise looks at security right. is more of the challenge. Yeah, and is, uh, if you look at the number of components you have in the Hadoop and the NoSQL stack, and you have to basically secure all those you know, components, it's extremely challenging for any enterprise. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know? It almost begs the question is, as you said, is the frameworks, and the industry kind of frameworks are not being defined and, and kind of being hardened. If, yeah. if somebody like an Infor or somebody that makes you know, industry specific applications um, for small, medium business and, and you know, kind of sub, one, sub Fortune 1000 will start to make finally your big data applications around a specific industry vertical because mm -hmm. they've got a pretty well defined speeds and feeds and inputs that they can give I, it to I, I am going to go on a limb and discuss this thing. I think the, the way the Databricks is going, mm -hmm. you know, they basically are trying to kind of suck the data from any other source directly into their platform on AWS. You can see a subscription-based analytical models for the enterprises where you can get the data from their core businesses onto the platform and the data scientists can do it or you can rent a data scientist running a database platform, do the analysis for a month. Every month you get a report at the end of the day if you're a taxi driver, where, where, are you, where your taxis are being plying more, mm -hmm. what is more profitable route, those kind of things. I think it's going to happen. And that's how you open it up to to more enterprises. Uh, more enterprises, yeah. I Data think science is a service. I like yeah. we haven't heard I, that one yet. Uh, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's a really interesting angle. Um, so great. So we're, we're close on time. I want to give you the last word. So over the next you know six twelve months, what's kind of top of mind for you, and what, what's on your us, roadmap? I think for us, it is the uh, starting of the solution roadmap in the first half of the set twenty fifteen. I think in twenty fifteen second half, you'll see us coming uh, along with the the big guys, uh, some vendor specific services offering. Uh, mm -hmm. and also the vertical specific service offering, you know, mm -hmm. on the use cases. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the market needs and yeah. we'll reach. And this is it. where it really starts to get interesting because now you're talking more about the business value, the applications, and this is where you're going to see industries starting to be really disrupted. I think so, uh, yeah. It's going to be an exciting year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Manny, thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. As always, great conversation. Uh, we'll, hope we'll have you on again soon, I'm sure. Right, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Stick around, we'll be right back uh, with our next segment after this.